Hi everyone. Uh, for today's lesson, our learning goal is that we are a community of believers. So we're going to focus on the word community. So what does that word mean to you? What is a community? So you've learned a little bit about community in social studies, especially in grade one and grade two. And we know that a community is a place where people live, work and play together. But what makes a good community? What makes a community a good place to be? Well, those things are a little bit different. So we need places that are clean and safe to go to. We also need places where people can come together and express their faith. So when we talk about community in this lesson, we're going to be talking about our community of Catholics and people who believe in Jesus Christ and God. So before we continue with our lesson, I'm going to do a reading from the book of Corinthians. So if you could join me by saying the parts of the passage that are in blue, that would be great. Uh, and don't forget when you say glory to you, O Lord, you need to do the three crosses. So one on your forehead, one on your lips, and one on your heart. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to you, O Lord. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what is this passage trying to tell us? It's saying that we are all individuals in the world, but we all belong to one body, and that is the body of Christ or the church. So even though there are many people in the world, we can all belong to the same body. And as members of this body, we become a community of believers. So now we're going to read a passage from our textbook, and the title is The Community of Believers. So we're going to be talking more about um, everyone who makes up the body of Christ. So everyone who is part of the community of believers. Since the beginning of the church at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has worked among the community of believers. Disciples of the early church were devoted to the apostles' teaching and fellowship. They broke bread and prayed together. They gathered together in homes to worship and pray to God. So we've been talking a lot about the Holy Spirit in this unit, and I want you to stop and think about how the Holy Spirit works among the community of believers. So he gives us courage, he gives us guidance, and he helps us. So the focus for today's lesson is we are going to compare the early uh, community of believers, so the early Christian people, with the community, community of believers that we have today. We're going to see what is the same and what is different between these two communities. So the church is a community of spiritual people, so people who are called by God to lead others. So now we're going to continue with the rest of the passage so you can read along with me. The disciples used their special gifts or charisms from the Holy Spirit to establish the church and bring Christ's message to others. They took care of people who were hungry, sick, and homeless. They began to build up the body of Christ in holiness, service, and charity. The Holy Spirit continues to work among members of the church today. So we're going to look at the faith facts at the bottom right-hand corner here. And it says, in the same way, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one in the Blessed Trinity. The members of the body of Christ are also called to be one. With the help of the Holy Spirit, people work to become more connected, to share God's love, and to live together in harmony and peace. And if we take a look at the picture at the bottom here, it says early Christians meet for prayer. And it's interesting because a lot of the things are the same as, as we do today. So we see a family gathered around a meal, and they're saying grace before they eat. And that's something that we still do today. So back in the old days, in the early church, who were the leaders? Well, they were the apostles and the disciples. 
Who are the leaders of the church now? Well, that would be bishops, priests, deacons, and there are also several other spiritual religious orders like the Jesuits and the Franciscans, and they do a lot of important work for the church as well. There are also other people in the community who aren't ordained, so they didn't go to school to become a priest, um, but they can still lead us and teach us as well. And these people often work in a parish or a church, and they do things like community outreach, so helping those who are less fortunate. And they also do things like um, maybe lead a youth ministry so that they can tell young people about the word of the Lord. So back in the old days, they didn't really have churches like we had now. So early Christians often gathered in their homes to pray and to reflect and to think about God. So today it's a little bit different. Today we have places of worship, so churches, and we gather there to pray and to think about God as a community. Before we begin this page, we're going to talk a little bit about the works of charity that the Catholic Church does. So before we even begin this discussion, what does the word charity mean? So when we say the word charity, we're talking about acts of love and caring for others that promote the common good. But what does the common good mean? Well, the common good means that those people who have a lot should share with people who don't have a lot. So imagine you're at a birthday party for your friend and your friend has a birthday cake and your friend gives you one slice of the birthday cake but keeps the rest for herself. That is not acting in the common good. So instead of keeping the birthday cake all to herself, she should give all of her friends a slice of cake and maybe have one slice of cake for herself. That's more fair, that's more just. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about the work we do as a community of believers. And these are called communions. So you might remember that word from your first communion. So a communion means coming together. So we're going to read first about the communion of spiritual gifts. So that's communities of men and of women called religious orders lead lives devoted to prayer, charity, and the spread of the gospel. Communion in faith and prayer. We gather in community in our parishes under the leadership of the Pope and bishops. People throughout the world gather in local parish communities to worship and pray to God. Communion in charisms. We use our special gifts from the Holy Spirit to share in the work of building up the church and bring Christ's message to others. Community in charity. We share what we have with those in need and, guided by the church's teaching, we try to make our world more just and fair for everyone. So even though we're all a little bit different in different ways, so for example, we don't all have the same talents, we don't all have the same gifts, we can still bring what we do have into the community of believers, and we can be united in a community together. So to finish off today, I'm going to read a short passage by St. Teresa of Avila, and it's called Christ Has No Body. And we talk often about the body of Christ, but we're not talking about the actual body of Christ, the physical body. When we refer to the body of Christ, we're talking more about the community of believers. So let's begin. Christ has no body. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all of the world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. So for your exit past, I want you to write a short journal entry about all the communities to which you belong. So think about your school community. So you belong to our school community. Maybe you're on a soccer team. That's a community. And I know during this time when we're not allowed to get together, it can be kind of weird to think about community and how things used to be. But just know that things will get back to normal and we'll get back to getting together again. So just think about all those communities that you belong to and look forward to the day when you can go back into those communities. 
So that's all for our lesson today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I'll see you tomorrow.